All right, so we've got another trailer that just dropped from uh, Creative Assembly, The Three Kingdoms. This one with Asun Jian. Uh, we're, so we're going to go through this day, kind of talk about some of the history that we see in here, uh, as well as some of the other kind of little things that we uh, see throughout this trailer. So let's just uh, go ahead and press play. I'll pause it all the relevant points I see, you know. Can't bring the volume down. Okay, well, I mean, right off the bat here. So we have uh, Dong Zhuo. He is escaping from this, this clearly this ruined city, this uh, on fire city. So um, as you guys kind of know from the lore, from the history of the Three Kingdoms, uh, there is this coalition against tyranny, this coalition against Dong Zhuo. And really how this got started was he was in cahoots with uh, He Jin. This is kind of right after the, the, the previous emperor, I think it's emperor like... Uh, I think it was like Emperor Liang. Well, the, emperor, the previous emperor dies, and the emperor, Empress Daoist, the the Dowager Empress, uh, and He Jin basically kind of set up this situation wherein Dong Zhuo would come into the the capital and remove these eunuchs from power. They, they were these basically this this kind of conniving force. And before this could actually happen, the eunuchs discovered that He Jin was trying to do this and killed him. So Dong Zhuo was like basically his. Uh, I guess you could say insulation against all this was immediately thwarted and people had this coalition against tyranny because he still invaded and still took the uh, emperor hostage and, and, and created a puppet emperor. So the coalition against tyranny with, you know, uh, Sao Sao, with Sun Jian, with uh, Liu Bei is all pretty much against Dong Zhuo here. Now, the town that he's fleeing from here is Luoyang in the uh, Henan province or Henan province, H-E-N-A-N. And please, by all means, correct me on my pronunciations. I'm trying to do the best I can, but at the same time, I'm not a native speaker. So I try to get pretty, pretty close. Now, he is fleeing because uh, Sun Zhan these, is uh, like right outside the gates, pretty much. Uh, he's, he's several li, which is actually a Chinese measurement of distance. It's a Chinese mile is what it's sometimes called. And it's about, the, uh, about a third of a distance of uh, um, a conventional mile. Now, he's fleeing this because, you know, he's surrounded. They're, 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 it's, kinda, it's bad times here for uh, Dong Zhuo. And Sun Zhan is, is pretty much this, this up-and-coming lord. Uh, he's this up-and-coming warlord. He Actually, in the grand scheme of the Three Kingdoms, he's really only in it for like 10 years. Like, uh, year 184 is really when he kind of comes to the fore. He comes in during the Yellow Turban Rebellion, and he kind of makes a name for himself in the province of Yu, he kind of helps quell a lot of rebellions and it gets himself, like, I think it's called the Master of Barbarians or something like that because he pretty much devises these really ingenious ways to uh, take care and take care of and deal with these rebellions. Now, uh, Sun Jian himself is called the Tiger of Zheng Dong. And this is really an awesome motif because the Three Kingdoms book describe him as having a, a very broad face and feline eyes like that of a tiger and, and having the hips of a bear. And I don't even know why you'd want to be called to have the hips of a bear, but, you know, it's it's all in the kind of sweeping characteristics of the Sun dynasty. And, and it's kind of, it's cool because they, they kind of derive lineage from uh, Sun Tzu, which is obviously, you know, the god of, not the god of war, uh, he made the uh, he makes this this amazing treatise on how to uh, commit war, how to kind of do deal with attacks and sieges and defenses. And it's actually uh, the a side tangent on uh, Sun Tzu. When it actually comes to him leaving the village he's in, the, the, the kind of like a proverb that deals with this. Like he's sick of war, he's sick of people, he's sick of just pretty much the way the world is run. He goes to leave, and one of the, the gate guards recognizes him and goes, hey, 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 you're the famous general Sun Tzu. You can't just go ahead and leave. You need to record everything you've written before you leave. And I'm not letting you out of the city until you do. And that's where we get the art of war, is from him going, okay, fine, I'm going to do this, but I don't want to do it. So it's kind of a really interesting, I guess, mythology behind the, the whole Sun name. Let's kind of go forward here a little bit more. And this city is extremely important. Uh, maybe not so this city because uh, I think they've they kind of blurred a line here. We'll talk about it in just a second. We'll keep going. My children, oh, yeah. from this disorder, we have found opportunity. Right here. The will of heaven. The imperial seal. 
Now, this is extremely important. You know, he who holds the Imperial Seal basically has been mandated by heaven to be the Emperor, more or less. Like, these Imperial Seals are extremely important to not just the, the time, which was a pretty turbulent time for emperors kind of switching hands a lot, uh, but of, of just Chinese culture. So this is the, one of the Jade Imperial Seals. And Sun John basically gets this and says, oh, okay, uh, uh, I, I kind of have a little bit more pull here. Now, in the actual history of what happened, this was found not in uh, Luoyang itself, but outside of it. So I think just for the, the pretense of this video, they kind of combined it into one city, and I'm totally okay with that. It, it makes for a more, a more, you know, kind of dramatic presentation, and, and I'm totally cool with that. Did destiny choose me? The tyrant fled west to Chang'an with his grip on the world failing. So yes, uh, Dong Zhuo does now flee west to uh, Chang'an, Chang which is the new capital that he establishes for uh, the Han Dynasty. And he basically, by doing this, it's a more defensible location. It's a better location. Uh, Luo Yang was, was not, it was not uh, ideal. And Emperor Ling was the, uh, the previous emperor. Uh, now I finally remember as I say it. He was the one who established himself there. So by uh, Dong Zhuo moving the, uh, the kind of the head of the capital, he, he is basically putting it further within his own territory, and he has a lot more control at this point. And Sun Jian, he has kind of a turbulent relationship with uh, Yuan Shu and uh, Yuan Shao, who are basically the, the leaders of the coalition, as, you, as, you, as we've talked about before. Um, he has a very turbulent relationship with these two, and when he kind of brings the uh, seal back to them, it causes a lot of issues. So we see Dong Zhuo here, right here in the center. This is obviously Liu Bu on the on the left, and this could be a uh, Zheng Liao. I'm not not really sure exactly who this is. Um, if you guys in the comment section do know, go ahead and holler at me. This is a conflict here. Now this is what I was talking about. And what of our so-called coalition? Nothing. Conspiring. Now, we've seen this, uh, this gentleman before. Now, Yuan Shu here really kind of... Uh, in, the, in this little scene right here, we have him being told by one of his men that like, hey, Sun Zhan has found an imperial seal and he's making off to become, to self-appoint himself the emperor and basically supplant you. And obviously, Yuan Shu is... is very paranoid at this point. We can trust only See, ourselves. look at that face. That's that's a face that mm, mm, we ain't friends anymore. You, my children. And he basically he motions to Yuan Shu, saying he being Sun Jian, saying I had like to retreat to my own camp now, to to my own base, and and saying that I don't have the seal, and if if I do have the seal, may I, my body be completely filled with arrows. Basically, is what he says. And that, that's kind of foreshadowing in and of itself, because shortly after this point, you are my purpose, my destiny. Pause as soon as I get the perfect Legacy. shot here, and there it is. Ha ha! So he does retreat, and in the middle of this, Yuan Shu sends Liu Biao over to him to to attack him. And they get in this really bad conflict. Like, Sun Jian is, is losing hand over hand, or hand over fist, and it is not going well for him. And eventually, he's kind of lured to this overpass, and he is completely shot to death by arrows. So Sun Jian actually dies, again, very, very, very quick in the grand scheme of the Three Kingdoms. I mean, he's really only in it from 184 to 191. So to give you guys an idea that, I mean, you, you're going to have Sun Chuan, who is uh, right here actually, um, in this for a lot longer. He actually helps set up the the Eastern Wu state, and you have uh, Sun Se, who is his uh, eldest son right here, uh, does a lot more. I mean, Sun Jian, while very important, he kind of has this moniker of like, oh man, this guy's in this in this for a long period of time. He's really only not. I mean, he appears in chapter five, and that's pretty much like about it. So you've got in order here of uh, I guess you could say eldest to youngest. Uh, Sun Jian, the uh, the head of the uh, Sun household, uh, Sun Se, who is his eldest son, then uh, Sun Chuan, who becomes the basically the, the eastern 
Wu State's first emperor, and uh, Sun Ren, who I, I actually I don't know if Ren is pronounced properly. Um, I guess a better way to pronounce her, actually say her name is her true actual name, which is uh, Sun Sheng Xiang, because that's uh, it's all one word. Uh, this is Lady Shu, as she is sometimes called, because uh, she is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Lady Sun, sorry, <laughs> Soon, Soon, Lady Soon, uh, as she is pretty much the, I think it's, he has five sons and two daughters, I can't remember off the top of my head, but pretty much all of his sons end up becoming pretty important people, in, in the, in, especially in the eastern uh, Wu state, and he kind of talks right here, let's back up right there. Oh, right here. Ourselves. You, my children, will see our Sun Dynasty rise. And it's you it's a hundred percent true. Purpose. So, what my happens destiny. at this point here is that Sun Jian dies very shortly after this very moment in, in this video, and it kind of sets. Oh, let's let's get that in there. Tiger Jian Dong. So good. Um, so he sets the he sets the stage for what becomes the Wu Dynasty, what becomes the uh, that state, and it really sets up his entire family to succeed because his whole entire family kind of goes from there, kind of galvanized from his death, and to, to get this vengeance, to get this this kind of establishment of their own culture, and he really kind of establishes this um, this tenacity in the very beginning of his I don't want to say reign, but his appearance as a warlord during the the Yellow Turban Rebellion, he is known for winning almost every single engagement. Even at a young age, he wins an engagement against these pirates by basically motioning to troops that weren't there, tricking the pirates into thinking that, oh man, they're surrounded by state troops. We've got to flee. And Sun Jian himself, as like, as like a, not a kid, but he's very, he's very young at this point. He hunts down the, the leader of every single pirate uh, force in that grand army and takes their head one for one. So he kind of has this this legacy that he leaves behind of being very tenacious, of being, you know, the tiger of Zheng Dong. And that's not simply because he is, because um, uh, he looks like a tiger, because he is also very fierce and very tenacious. He's one of the tiger general. Oh no, Whew, that's Liu Bei. Whew. Got, got that confused there. Um, but he has a, a really wide sweeping effect on the entirety of the Three Kingdoms. And he, while again, while having a very short appearance in the, the overall story, he does play a very huge and pivotal hand in the overarching lore of the Three Kingdoms. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this little video here on uh, Sun Jian. Uh, we got some more stuff coming out here this week for y'all. We're going to have some quick battles. We're going to have some army lists uh, for Kislev. I got some, some other planned on uh, Thursday that's going to be a little bit of a surprise. So hope you guys enjoyed that. But thanks so much for watching here today, guys. Uh, if you do have any problems with my pronunciation, please, by all means, let me know in the comments. I'm trying to work on it as best I can. Um, since I don't speak the language, I obviously it, it kind of depreciates from video to video as I kind of try and refresh myself. But by all means, let me know. Please let me know. But hopefully we'll hear more stuff about Three Kingdoms in the, uh, the coming weeks here. Um, it looks like we did get a pushback, though. As I, as I now look at this and discover as I'm talking, they will be seeing Three Kingdoms in spring of 2019 versus fall of 2018, I believe is what we were expecting. Were we expecting like a September release or some shit? So that's, that's kind of, that is what that is, I suppose. I mean, I'm, I'm always with the mindset, if you're going to delay the release of a game, it's because you want to polish it more rather than like, something catastrophic happens. So I'm going to hope I'm going to stick with that mindset that, Hey, yeah, something cool is happening or, or maybe they just have to polish something off before this game kind of comes live. So I guess be that, be that as it may spring 2019 is when we'll be seeing three kingdoms. And I cannot wait to jump in on this game. Like I'm already stoked on all the history and all the lore and everything. And we'll, we'll do more videos about some of the uh, generals on kind of a one-off. So you guys better get a better idea of the overarching history of the three kingdoms period. But as always, guys, thanks so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.